Network Address Translation As you know, the Internet has grown larger than anyone ever imagined it. This is you can hardly find a company or a university or even anyone that uses computer without the Internet. So why do I talk about the Internet and what does the size of the Internet have to do with NAT or Network Address Translation? Basically everything. Hi, I'm Hurang and in this video, we're going to talk about NAT. We're going to understand the purpose and operation of network address translation. We want to understand how to configure NAT and what are the different types of NAT. For a computer to communicate with other computers and web servers on the Internet, it must have an IP address. Uh, it's more like the telephone network. Everyone on this network has a unique phone number. So when IP addressing first came out, everyone thought that there are more than enough addresses to cover any need. Theoretically, you could have something around 4 billion addresses, unique addresses. Though the actual number of the addresses is something around uh, 3 billion addresses, since uh, some of them are reserved for multicasting or scientific purposes. This is where NAT comes to the picture. Network address translation allows a single device, such as a router, to act as an agent between the Internet and a local network. This means that only a single, unique IP address is required to represent the entire group of computers. If I want to give you another example, NAT is like a receptionist in a large organization. Imagine an organization with 400 employees, as you can see in the picture. If the organization wants to provide a phone line for everyone in that company, then they have to request for 400 phone numbers from a telecommunication service provider. This one is very costly for the company. Imagine that you want to call your colleague in that company. Then at the end, uh, the company will face with a very large and uh, uh, very uh, big bill of uh, phone numbers that everyone calls a, a colleague inside that company. So instead of requesting for a phone number from a te telecommunication service provider, what they do is that the company establishes its internal phone network with an extension for every employee, which is uh, uh, for every employee in that company, and this extension is locally significant. Then, to have a connectivity with the rest of the world, they buy one or more valid phone numbers. Now, anyone from the outside calls the main number to the organization, which is the only number the caller knows. But here, if people from the inside the company want to call each other, they uh, simply dial each other's extension. So when you dial your colleague's extension, you don't have to pay any phone bill to, uh, to any uh, telecommunication uh, company. Now, when a caller from outside calls to the company, the reception answers the call. Then the caller tells the reception that she's looking for someone in the organization. The reception checks a lookup table that matches the requested name with the extension. Then the reception forwards the caller to the extension of the requested person. That is how uh, the local network, a uh, local of telephone network works and communicates with outside uh, world. If someone from the inside wants to wants to call to someone to the outside world. He has to go through the reception. Then the reception dials the phone number of the, that person uh, on the public network. And then they can communicate with each other. This is how NAT works. If you imagine that we have 400 computers here, there will be a router in between. This can be a router, a firewall, or a computer. And here I have the rest of the world. Uh, this part is the rest of the world, internet that we have. And here I have, on this side, I have my uh, organization. Now, if a computer from in, uh, here at this uh, in local uh, network that we have, we have private addresses. And here you have public addresses, meaning everyone on the net needs to have a public address. So how do I get these people connected to the outside world when I have a private address? 
is easy. I configured this router to be my receptionist. Anyone from inside goes to the router, then router changes the IP address of this person, and it forwards the packet outside to the rest of the world. For example, if someone from here sends a packet, he wants to go out to this server. When he sends a packet, it goes to the router. The router changes the address of that computer, and it sends it to this server. When the server wants to send back the respon uh, response to that computer, this server has no idea about the address of this computer. So the server thinks that the packet has come from the router. The response goes back to the router. Once the router received the packet, it changes, it, it changes the address and it forwards the packet to that computer that is requested for the address. That is how NAT works. Now later I'll talk about NAT in more detail and uh, we'll go through the scenario that I have created and I'm going to show you how to configure it and how the whole package works. But if you want to see where NAT is located in the OSI reference model, as you can see in the picture, it is at layer 3. At layer 3, we have uh, it's our network address and we have source IP address. Here is the uh, structure of the packet that we have. This is packet header. Here we have source address and destination address. So Ma uh, NAT works by looking at the source and destination address and by changing these addresses. Now later I'll show you which address will be changed and how it changes. But what are the different types of NAT that we have? We have static NAT, we have dynamic NAT, and we have NAT with overloading or NAT with or NAT with PAT. But what is static NAT? Static NAT maps a private IP address to a public IP address on a one-to-one -one basis. So what does this mean? If you look at this picture, on the left side of this picture, I have my local network, my LAN, and on the right side, I have the internet. Now, imagine that someone from the inside your network wants to send the packet uh, to someone from the outside. Now, the source address will be 192.168.1.1. That is a private IP address. And someone in the network and the outside, for example, let's say we have a server here that we want to send the packet, this guy is going to send something out to this server. Imagine that the address of this server is 72.30.2.43. That is a public address. Now, if you want to send this, this packet out, this packet has a private IP address as its source address. Your ISP will block any private IP addresses. So when you have a private address, you cannot go to the net. Because everyone in this world can have that private address. So if two, uh, two computer, two client go out to the net with the same address, then there will be an ambiguity how to send back the packet to that particular person. So what will happen here is this. You send this packet to the router. The packet comes all the way to the router. Then router looks at the address. It says this guy wants to go out to this address, but he cannot use this address. So the router changes the address of the uh, packet that you have sent. The source address will be changed to a public IP address, meaning 200.100.10.1. Destination will be the same. Now the router sends this out, but to remember that who was this 192.168.1.1 and I changed his address to 200.100.10.1 the router has a NAT table here in the NAT table we have inside IP address and outside IP address here the router will register will record that I changed 192.168.1.1 to 200.100.10.1 then it sends the packet out to this server when the server receives the packet and it wants to respond back to that uh, computer, the server will see that a packet with the source address of 200.100.10.1 has come and the destination address is this one which is the address of the server. When it wants to send back the packet, the packet will be something like this. The source address will be the address of the server 
and the destination address will be the address of that public address that the router has assigned to that computer to that packet so the packet comes all the way to the router when it comes to the router the router looks at the NAT table it says this packet has a destination address of 200.100.10.1 so who is 200.100.10.1 when it looks at the NAT table it sees that 200.100.10.1 is actually 192.168.1.1 so it changes the address here I copy this paste it in here it changes the address destination address destination address becomes this and it goes to this computer that has requested for the packet now this computer here has no idea about this change in the address and this server here has no idea about the change in the IP address the only one who knows about all these changes is this router now why do I say static net static net means a one-to-one -one mapping meaning I configure on this router that whenever you saw a packet from 192.168.1.1 it comes to you you change its address to 200.100.10.1 whenever you saw a packet that comes from 192.168.1.2 change the address to 200.100.10.2 and when a packet comes from 192.168.1.3 change it to 200.100.10.3 what does it mean? It means if another computer is there and this computer sends a packet to the router and the rou this packet comes from the fourth computer which I haven't configured on this router the router is, will not assign any address to that address will not change the address of that packet so that that packet cannot go out to the internet only for these three computers we have configured on this router statically and these three computers can go out by change of this address that is how static network 